Are you ready to continue our look into how to recognise chords quickly and easily at the piano? If you missed last week's video which covered some of the very most basic ideas, then perhaps you might want to watch that first, so I've linked it here for you. Otherwise, stay tuned and you can always watch it later. Are you sitting comfortably? Then let's begin. Hi, this is Tommy with Tommy's Piano Corner, the place for returning pianists or indeed anybody who loves the piano to share tips and ideas of how to get the best from this great hobby. If this is your first trip here, then please don't forget to subscribe. Simply hit the little icon in the bottom right hand corner of your screen now and it's all done for you. Last week, I explained how we can take our first steps in being able to recognize chords quickly at the piano. We're doing this, don't forget, because it will make our sight reading a lot easier to do, it makes memorising more simple, and it also improves our overall knowledge of theory and harmony. Today, we're going to continue our journey, but we're going to look at how do you recognise a chord from the dots in the music in front of you. The first thing that we're going to do is again using music that we know very well, this is important, and that we recognise quite easily. We're going to get versions of it where we've got the music and the chords written in. Now these are remarkably easy to find. I just did a simple search on Google for piano music with chords free and it came up with a stack of them, especially if you click on the little images tab on Google search. And I was quite surprised to find that there were loads and loads and loads of these on Pinterest, which is not a site I've particularly used before. Again, we want to keep things relatively simple, so look for something that's not such a complicated arrangement. Just try to play through, I don't know, two, three or four of these each day, and pay specific attention as you play to the notes and to the chord symbol that's there. You don't need to keep to strict time whilst you're doing this. You're not trying to sight read it. Take time, stop when you need to, go from the music to your hands back to the music. Make sure that you can see why the chord symbol that's written is there in the notes. One quick tip though is bear in mind that quite often the melody note might not actually be part of the chord. So quite often it can be easier to just ignore the melody note when you're trying to work out the chord rather than try to work out a chord with that note in it. And again, don't forget, you need to try and find things in plenty of different key signatures. Don't just stick with the simple ones like C major. Here's an example then of how you might do this using just the first few bars of Over the Rainbow. There are lots of examples of Over the Rainbow to view and download, in lots of keys too. You'll also notice that even in simple arrangements, different chords are quite often used. Remember here, what we're trying to do is to make sure we've understood why the chord symbol is, say, a C major from the notes that are in the music score. Let's take a look at the first bar of this arrangement. It's marked with a C major chord, and we can see in the left hand, the whole bar uses the C major triad in root position, but split right the way across the bar. If we look at this other arrangement, we'll see that in the same bar, we go from a C major to an A minor chord. Here, you don't have all the notes of the C major chord, the G is missing, but given the C's in the bass, this is a very strong clue. We can clearly see the move to the A minor chord. All three notes of that chord are present for us. Next, we move to E minor, with the E and the B in the left hand and the G in the right hand. We can see from this F sharp, by the way, that we're moving through another chord that isn't marked. And you don't need to find a new chord for every note that you see. Just focus on the major ones as they've marked here. We have a brief move to C7. Again, not all of the notes are present. The G is missing again, 
But the C in the bass again gives us the clue we need. We then move to F major. The entire chord is split across both hands for us. In the other arrangement, we again have three notes spread across the first three beats of the bar. Then we move on to the C major chord again before going to F major. Pay attention to the first three notes of the bar here. And then into F minor, we have the A flat without changing the other notes. I'm sure by now you're getting the hang of this idea as we see C major here, then D minor, then G, before we go back to C. The next thing then that we're going to do is we're going to take music where the chords aren't written in and try to work them out for ourselves. Again, as I've said in all of these videos, we need to keep things simple to start with. We need things that have simple time signatures that aren't full of embellishments or complicated, awkward rhythms. The best music I've managed to find when I've been Googling around for this kind of thing is either hymn music or Christmas carols. They're all in relatively simple time signatures and you can also find them in lots of different key signatures. One of the problems with more popular music is it tends to have syncopated or difficult rhythms that add to the problem and all we're really trying to do at the moment is focus on the chord aspect of this. However, if you're unfamiliar with this kind of music, then you just go to music that you know well. Maybe you'll find if you still have some of your more beginner books that there'll be lots of material in there that you could use for this exercise. Now, there are two ways that I recommend you approach this. The first of them is to try and work out the chords whilst you're away from the piano. So you can do this on the bus or the train to work, you can do it at lunchtime over coffee. Just sit down with a copy of your score, go through it and work out the different chords that are there. Don't forget to look for chord changes that might appear halfway through a bar or a measure to make sure you've captured them all. There'll be occasions where you don't see enough notes written out for you to be able to work out the chords. So if that's the case, mark it with a question mark. And as you get home at night, then sit down at the piano and try adding different notes in until you find the one that sounds right. The next way to do this is to actually do it whilst playing. And this is why you need very simple arrangements of music. So the hymn music and Christmas carols are quite useful. So you just sit down, you play through nice and slowly. And as you play a chord, Either say it aloud or say it in your head, the chord that it is. Don't rush, don't feel you need to keep to a strict tempo. Look from the music to your hands, back to the music, and get used to the correlation and get used to not thinking of individual notes, but of the chord that you've just named. Once you've practiced doing this for a little while, you'll find that you actually recognize them amazingly quickly. After a couple of weeks, I'm convinced that you'll start noticing lots and lots of chords in the classical music that you play as you practice. You won't recognize all of them because as we said right at the beginning of this series, classical composers don't limit themselves to simpler chords. And that's why in next week's video, we're going to start looking at some of the more exotic chords. I'm not gonna use the word complex or complicated because really they're not. So, if you're not, don't forget to subscribe to Tommy's Piano Corner, click that little bell icon, then you'll be notified of next week's video as it's released. I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next week.